From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. Hey guys, I'm back, I'm back. I'm not leaving the, ending the night. <laughs> I'm not ending the night on me screaming. Hey guys, it's nice to see you. I hope everybody's doing well. <laughs> oh, good heavens, good heavens. Hey, Jules. <laughs> Lori, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I see Stephanie in here, guys. It's nice to see you all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I needed, after I did that, I had to just, I had to take a breather. I ended up doing my, my hair. <laughs> And I'm just like, I, I, I just had, I had to step away. It was just, it's been one of those days. It has absolutely been one of those days. Hey guys, it's nice to see you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, but I had, a, I, I, I don't know. We just had to come to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? We just all had to come to Jesus. I don't know if it helped, but you know what? To be honest with you, I, like the reason why I decided to come and do this, this live is because my friend over on YouTube, Justin for all, right? You guys should go over. He's got uh, clutch the pearls, and anyways, you know he's right back to brass tacks. You know, getting back to business. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you know, it just kind of reminded me that we should too. You know, we need to get back to to brass tacks. So, what do we do? I mean, what can we do? We're we're kind of sitting here. I think everybody's kind of in the same. Um, in the same boat. So I think at this point, we just need to get back to theories. I don't know about the maps because I, I'm, I'm done kind of studying the maps for a little minute because I can't get out there. And everybody seems to be, you know, kind of chaotic on here. So it might, we might as well go over some theories. So some people have been sending me some stuff um, by email. Is Beach in the house? Hi. I tried to find you. You need to send me a message or something because somebody told me things were going on on your chat last night and I went to go find you. <laughs> I couldn't find you. I'm like, because ah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know you girls are probably really, really techie on here and I know I've been here for a while, but I'm really not that techie. You, you'd be amazed how how untechy I am. <laughs> I'm just untechy. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. So anyways, I've just, today was just one of those things. It was just awful. It really was. It was awful in, um, when I was watching this one show, like I was all, like I was seriously in, just in disbelief and just like, I, I was almost in tears. I just, I, I honestly was almost in tears. So, you know, I don't know. Was Beach in trouble? Did you get in TikTok trouble? <sighs> TikTok, TikTok, you know. <laughs> I, guess the, I guess the name really is what, it really is what, uh, <laughs> TikTok, right? Looking over every time we turn around. Oh shit, is it my time? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, good heavens. Heavens to Betsy. Heavens to Betsy. So, anyways, um, there's somebody that has been kind of sharing with me their... Um, <laughs> I came up. You guys were all suspended. What? <laughs> Is this the jailhouse rock? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All you bad people. You guys got to quit fighting with each other. Good Lord. <laughs> sister <laughs> quit pulling your hair <laughs> oh good lord you guys crack me up you guys crack me up. I try to stay out of it you know what I really do I don't like it I don't like fighting with people I really don't I know people think I I love I I hate it I I hate it I want you know, I know we all can't come and get along. It's just, you know, that that would be a perfect world. And we know we'll never live in that, right? But damn it, why can't we all just get along? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? <sighs> it's frustrating. Frustrating. Okay. So anyways, let's get back to this, okay? So somebody sent me a theory, okay? I'm going to I'm gonna throw it out. <laughs> Oh my God, I got to read this. I'm sorry. We have to stop the show for this. I'm sorry. You know what? It's Friday. We need some comedy in our, our lives. Okay. We, we definitely need some comedy. I, I, I think, um, was copper, copper 71's got it tonight. Okay. I got suspended for rescuing a chicken on a New York beach. <laughs> or cry for you i really don't but the way it's said that's some funny shit I, I can't lie i can't lie okay i hope you're not mad at me for for laughing at you okay i really do i, I i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing with you okay i promise you i am <laughs> such hateful behavior shame on me <laughs> I know. What can I say? I'm, I'm a troublemaker, okay? I'm sorry. I'm a troublemaker. What can I say? What can I say? <laughs> You're a rebel. <laughs> You're going platinum. <laughs> oh, I'm already crying. I don't know. <laughs> Am I going to do this show? Okay, let me get back to professionalism, okay? Guys got me, guys got me going. Guys got me going. Okay. Theory. I don't know how to come back from that. I really don't. Uh, theory. So this is going to be a little long-winded. And I, of course, didn't take a picture of it because it's pretty long. And I didn't. Oh, sh hopefully it was blurry. I'll probably have to blur that out. I don't know what I was thinking. Because the reason why I didn't take a picture is because I didn't want to dox anybody. I could be gracious. Anyways, uh, good morning. My theory has never changed. So we'll go, we'll go through this in parts. We'll go through this in <laughs> I'm going to quit reading chat because I'm not going to be able to get through this. Okay. With a straight face. I can already tell you guys are, you guys are a riot on a Friday night. Okay. Contain yourself, folks. Contain yourself. <clears throat> Katie was allegedly, cause this brings in the affair. I know you guys literally think that there may or may not be an affair. So in her theory, there's an affair. Katie was allegedly having an affair. She says, this is important. Nina called into, I think it was T Rev. It wasn't T Rev. Oh no, she says Trev. It was. It was Trev time. Um, into uh, tell what CP had done in her marriage. I think met KP had done in her marriage and the Bower Sox involvement in practically kidnapping. Oh, CP had done in their marriage. I got it because coming from Nina. I got it. Sorry, I'm I'm losing track here. So Nina called into the show to tell what CP had done in her marriage and how the Bower Sox involvement and practically kidnapping Faith from, um, from her. And that was important. The timing of the disappearance and the impending court case over Faith, which I believe is a permanent protection order against CP for both Faith and Nina is important. According to the neighbor who called in, they stated that they had, previous, uh, they had provided video evidence to LE, CP was home in February. During 
it was during this time when he was pressure washing the RV that he turned the pressure washer on Sebastian. We heard that. Again, this is theory, guys. I want to make sure all the people coming in, you guys realize I'm reading someone's theory. I believe that when Faith came over the winter break, she witnessed CP abusing Sebastian. I believe she went home and told her mother, Nina, that she didn't want to go back there ever again. That's the normal response of a child. I think Nina called KP and told her what Faith had said about the, um, I don't, can we say like abuse on here? I don't know. I don't want to say anything I'll get in trouble for. I think I'm okay with abuse. Uh, CP was sent out in early January and CP began living in the RV. CP was enraged over the entire situation and when he came home in mid-February, he took that rage out on Sebastian from in the form of the pressure washer. A pressure washer will rip bark off trees and paint off cars. Now, some people, and I do know there's different tips on a pressure washer. So at the end of the day, no matter what it is, it can really, really hurt. And I don't, and I don't want to test it out or, you know, to, to apply theory because that could require me to have stitches. So you can understand my reluctance to put this theory to a test, okay? I'm not doing it. If somebody else wants to do it on here, I know you guys do some kamikaze stuff on here. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not encouraging it at all and I don't want anybody. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's just satire. I mean, you've done, oh, well, Copper, you're braver than I am, okay? What happened? <laughs> if you put it the theory to the test, you might, might, might as well ask, what happened? <laughs> I'm waiting. I don't know how far, how many uh, seconds this has lag on it, but uh, nothing, but it depends on the, t okay, okay. So you didn't, it didn't hurt you or anything? Like you didn't get, like, um, it didn't, well, I guess you're okay washing the house. Okay. I don't know, but I think it has to hurt. <laughs> and if you hit your foot, I mean, I have to think there's, there's got to be a lot of nerves in your feet. There's a lot of nerves just about everywhere, I would presume. Where was I? So Kate, so Kate called to report the abuse. CPS was sent out out early January, and CP began living in the RV. CP was enraged over this entire situation, and when he came home in mid-February, he took out his rage on Sebastian in form of the pressure washer. A pressure washer. Okay, we, we talked about that. The temperature in February fluctuate, but having spent my early childhood, thank you guys, Having spent my early childhood in Tennessee, I can tell you that the water is frigid in the mountain year round, and that had to be a, a brutal experience. The neighbor said uh, Sebastian had a major meltdown, and CP, if I remember correctly, told KP to come out and get her effing R word. I think I think that uh, assault let. <clears throat> I think that. Jeez, Louise, I can't even read this. It's small print, guys. I think that the assault, let's call it, let's call it what it is. CP assaulted uh, Sebastian with what could, <laughs> sorry, what could be a deadly weapon. I didn't mean to laugh at that, but I, I, it's just, you know, you're thinking of, sorry, I, I, that was inappropriate at the wrong time. It, it, it had, hit <laughs> sorry, I don't know why I'm chuckling at that, but it just, it, the assault. With it. I mean, it could, I mean, in, in all reality, to be honest with you, uh, she's not lying, but it's just, it, 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 it I guess it, it just computes in the head a little odd. If it had, it, and it goes into the jugular and carotid and whatever, you know, if it tore skin, it could be obviously lethal. I think KP was rightfully enraged at CP and told him, never, uh, told him he had to leave and that she was going to testify for Nina. I can see her saying, you'll never see your your daughter again. Look at all the photos and videos available of Sebastian. Tell us what you see. Do you see a child who looks like he's been neglected by his mother? No. You see a child who is engaged in many activities. He's well-groomed and well-dressed. I thought from the beginning that Katie looked in... Um, 
I thought from the beginning that Katie looked in that first interview like somebody with Stockholm Syndrome. She was constantly looking at her captor for approval. Every word she says, she looked like she wanted to say something but couldn't. And CP looked like he was keeping her in line and he's still keeping her in line. I think this is this incident was the last straw and I think that CP went to his mother's and sister's and they decided that he would take Sebastian and hold him as insurance until the custody case was over. I think they threatened Katie and that if she spoke a word anyone to anyone, they wouldn't see her their son again. So <clears throat> we've got a little bit more, but I am gonna stop there because I just need a little bit of a, a, a rest. There's some of this stuff that actually could be plausible. Now, you know, there are some things that I feel are, are a little too mafia-like, you know, in, in fairness. But honestly, sometimes truth is, is stranger than fiction. But you know what I'm saying? This theory, I mean, in all fairness, could pan out. But I think the whole captor thing... I, I just think it's 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 too mafia style. I don't think it's I, I <clears throat> But the whole thing with the, the um with Chris Proudfoot I think being the instigator it's hard to say this, but I, I'm I'm starting to think it's not really Stockholm syndrome. I, I don't know why I'm getting, you know, the vibe, but I just feel like, you know, we have to look at the facts. And, and, and right now we have, and these were the prior PIs for Seth. And he's basically saying, and, and this, the, they're basically saying they verified the fact that uh, Chris was at work at 515 in the morning. So he was there. Uh, people are saying he wasn't supposed to start work at se until 7 a.m., I, I, I have seen the post where a, a co-worker has said that, but other than that, I haven't seen where it was corroborated by a second or third person. So, it, and it's not like I was really looking that hard and with the mountain of stuff that's, you know, at this point, we're almost three months in, it's, it's almost getting buried. You know, some of those first things that were coming out are almost getting buried with all this other stuff. So it's been quite difficult trying to go back and fact find or find the information that I need, but Chris appeared to have been at work at 515. So, and, and, and the neighbor said that Chris wasn't home that weekend. So we have to look at that and we have to wait that, you know, that has to be waited. So the only person that's putting themselves with Sebastian at all that weekend I mean, outside of a few ancillary people like the aunts and the cousins and stuff like that, is the mom. The mom was the only one with him. She was the last one to see him. She was the last one to hear his voice. And nobody else at this point has been, has been put in that house other than her. So, you know, I trust me, I'm on the drum beat because Chris is just a jerk to say it nicely, right? A woman, I mean, I could just think of a, a million things to say, but just a jerk. And so I think that takes a lot of the focus away from Katie. But is Katie got the Stockholm type syndrome? Or does Chris know that she needs to keep her mouth shut? Are we reading this wrong? Like even the lights, guys, even those lights in the back of the house, you know, where we had the overlay and it looked like, be careful, he has a TikTok now. <laughs> Jerk foot. He has a TikTok now? Is he gonna start socking me here? Oh my gosh. So, you know, I don't know. I I just I just feel like we're looking at him because he's such a jerk. And because of that, like even those scratch marks on his arms, guys, think about it. That could have been, you know 
the disposal part of it. You know, you got to remember, it's till death do you part. Maybe he's, you know. But I got to tell you, the whole motorcycle thing really does bother me. Her going and shopping for a motorcycle. And everybody said, everybody said it was Chris. They all said it was Chris. But I'm sorry, when you look at this, it's not Chris getting off of a motorcycle. It's Katie getting off the motorcycle. It's Katie. It's not Chris. And I'm going to find it here. Just stick, stick with me. There it is. I think this is a beautiful... Oh, that's too damn big. I hate that. I, I wish they would resize it on these, these lives. <laughs> I really wish they would resize. Let me see if I can find one that I took a, a smaller size. But it, if I can't, I'll put, I'll put Sebastian back up. But uh, there we go. Uh, you can't see that one either. See? I don't know. It just doesn't want to resize it for me. I'm going to have to do something about that. But anyways, I, I, I'm not going to go through it. You guys, if you guys haven't seen it, it it's got to be somewhere on one of my, my, it's probably on a Facebook group somewhere. But you guys need to go look at it. You clearly see Katie's leg coming off the motorcycle. You see Chris kind of leaning from another motorcycle looking at her like, you know, how did it feel, hon? You know? She was the one getting off the motorcycle. Not, not, not Chris. I mean, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Motorcycles, and I said this before, symbolize freedom to me. I've known a lot of bikers. So that's problematic for me that Katie's looking for a motorcycle, that Katie was the last one to see Sebastian, that... Chris is taking over all the conversations. She's now, when she, the last time she came on was that Reels interview. Remember that? And she was like, yep, no, nope, yep. She was like a stick figure. When she, when she was on Smiley's World, she, she was literally 24 days in. Her son is medically needy. Her son, the, the child she gave birth to, her medically needy son, has been missing for 24 days at the time a Smiley World interview. And do you know she went in there angry and pissed? Like, how dare people think I had anything to do with my son? She wasn't freaking out. She wasn't crying. Hey, blessed. She was literally angry. That is not an emotion I like seeing from a mother when she's had a medically needy son missing for 24 days. And I know everybody is saying, well, there's no evidence and people grieve differently but I'm sorry, I don't know of a grieving person that goes motorcycle shopping and is pissed off at the world. Because they're asking questions. Like even that interview, I, I, I think it was a good 45 minutes, 30 minutes into the interview before they even spit out their son's name. Like, like when we go live, like Sebastian's name is one of the first things that we say on here. We give a full introduction. When I'm just sitting here yapping, we keep his face up here. We Anybody that's, that's trolling through or, or, you know, going through the lives, whether they like us or not, is seeing this boy's face, right? And his name. Whether they, cut, whether they're, they're, they stay or not, right? They, they see his face and they see his name. But mommy dearest, they they haven't even posted. You know what I found out? I found out Chris and I, I, <laughs> I must have been his first in the case when I was, you know, didn't realize the direction of this case or something. But apparently I requested to be friends with Chris Proudfoot or Chris Proudfoot request. I think it was me. I think I requested to be friends with Chris Proudfoot. Well, I was going through something and I realized I'm friends with Chris Proudfoot. <laughs> On my Facebook page. No lie. No lie. Do you know how many times I've been tempted to, to send him an email and ask him questions? I wonder if you'd answer. Do you guys think... <laughs> He's probably 
probably going to be watching this saying, did I really accept her friend request? Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> I'm, fr I'm friends with the crazy chick with the bullhorn. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to have to, you know, tick them off, you know. I don't want to have to tick them off for him to respond, you know. So it's just one of these things that um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm tempted. I'm t I, no, 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 no. I think that's a little intrusive. I think that's a little intrusive. I know. I know. Sometimes I don't mind being, but you know, there are. We have to. I, I, there's nothing that is changing my mind so far that the proud foots aren't involved. And quite frankly, I still think that there might be a third or fourth party involved as well, or a few people that know. Because just based on the information, um, let me see this. I want to look at his, um, that uh, Department of Justice one, because I heard that um, change name us daddy by search and we're going to do sebastian rogers see if that hits right there it is i heard it changed Somebody told me there was some information on here that changed, and I wanted to verify that information before I said anything, and I'm not seeing the information change like they were, like they had said it did. Surely has not. Never mind. I answered my own question. I answered my own question. Just to let everybody know, the NamUs, um, since it's been out, it's only been updated uh, one other time, and it was just updated. Um, just saw the last update. April 30th. It was just updated April 30th. It hasn't been updated since April 30th. So I think, because I heard this, somebody is telling people um, that the location of where uh, Sebastian disappeared from has changed and it has changed on the NamUs um, uh, missing person and that's from the, Depar the, the Department of Justice and the information is, is the same. I mean, obviously something was updated on April 30th, 2024 but I don't know what was updated on here. It might have been that they added because the one thing I didn't see when they first had this up there was the eyewear and the clothing. Now that I, I may not, I just may not have dropped that box down as well. So I don't know what was updated on here, but it looks about the same with the information. Yeah, I thought it changed too, but I'm looking at it. And if anything did change, it doesn't look like it was a major change to it because it looked in everything that I read, this is what it reads. I mean, <clears throat> it, I can't remember what this part here said, but I don't know if it was in cap locks when I read it before. I can't remember, but it's in cap locks right now. And it, but it does seem like it says the exact same thing because I remember questioning it because it says last seen at approximately 10 p.m. on 2 25 2024 Central Time at his residence in Hendersonville, Tennessee last seen wearing a black sweatpants and, and sweatshirt, possibly left barefoot. And I remember reading that on my um, my show on YouTube, and I re remember almost reading that exactly the way it was. It doesn't sound like it's changed much. So, click on the map of last known location. Okay, Nicole, thank you. Okay, I see what you're saying. But could that... I quite, I, I've never seen that map feature, feature before. Thank you for pointing that out to me. That's probably... And I, I didn't see where, the, where it was on the map before. 
unfortunately. So I, I probably wouldn't be the best one to say whether this has changed or not because I really don't know. This is I never seen this. I never paid attention to the map before. But according to this map, it says that the last reported sighting um, was it looks like it's almost behind um, Moe's Southwest Grill. What is that in conjunction? Let me put that in conjunction with the Proudfoot home. Why not? Let's see how far away it is. Huh. Okay. That's a far distance away. I mean, on foot, it doesn't seem like it's a far distance away. But on foot, that's two and a half hours away. I guess it's plausible. Thank you, Nicole. It, w it, it was too... Oh, I always do that. I accidentally hit the wrong thing. There it is. There's the map. It's like two and a half hours away on foot. It's 14 minutes away by car, bus, you know, Uber, whatever. But when you look at it, it's two and a half hours away. But if we did apply, <clears throat> now, there were the lights. The lights were possibly, you know, there's some things that are a little, I don't know. We don't know. <clears throat> when it comes to the lights in the backyard, this is what we were told. <clears throat> the same law enforcement... <laughs> that said that, that it was a dump truck, which there's no dump truck literally driving, or not dump truck, garbage truck driving on grass, okay? Clearly the lights were in a grassy area. If you look at where the camera is and where the lights were, it wasn't on a road, it was in grass. But it was said at 11, uh, 311, and some people keep saying that the 311 though, they said that was the wrong time, that it was stuck on 311. This is what I've, now, I'm not going to call, you know, I'm obviously not law enforcement, but, you know, if they said that a dump truck was in grass, that, or a garbage truck was in grass, would it be too far to, of a stretch to think that maybe um, they didn't tell us the truth about the time? Because everything that I know about uh, videotaping and cameras and the time on there is that it doesn't get stuck in one time. Like, the time will be off but it still keeps ticking. And the, the law enforcement said that the, the camera got stuck on 311. And I've just, it's, it, again, I, I don't know because I'm obviously not law enforcement and I, I obviously can't look at the footage. I obviously don't know where it came from. I obviously, well, I know where it came from, but I obviously don't have access to the system or anything like that. I've just never heard of a, video being stuck on a specific time. I've heard of the time being absolutely wrong, it being set wrong for whatever reason, if it's especially if it's not hooked to the internet. And um, sometimes I've, I've heard that the it, 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 it was off by an exact hour because it didn't reset to daylight savings time or something like that. But to have it stuck at 311, not ticking at all, but recording? I just never heard that. I'm not saying that it, it can't happen. I just personally, me personally, have never heard of that. I bet she can control the security camera. She's installed them probably. Yeah. But you know what? We did have a neighbor that did uh, corroborate that they had the Brinks trucks over and they put they put a system in and there were cameras and i think there was a neighbor that said that there weren't cameras out outside of that house when sebastian disappeared i heard that they were installed well it, it, i mean if we believe this again i i haven't corroborated this neighbor's statement so take it for what you will it, it could be true it could not be true because I, you know the stuff we're here and are people calling into a show you know i can see well, hi, I'm Mary down the street, yes, and um, I just wanted to tell you that um, we we uh, we did witness some things down there and just bless their heart, you know. I uh, we did we did witness him, you know, spraying him with the pressure. Like who, do, who, 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 you know, you know what I'm saying? Like they're on a phone. So, I mean, I just want to throw that out there to you. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're on a phone. We can't see them. We don't know who they are. So, I mean, we got to start, you know, kind of come back to reality a little bit. You know, the, this stuff may or may not be true. I mean, <laughs> no, still sounds like poor Betty. Okay, well, let me see if I got a different voice. Hold on. <clears throat> well, hello there. <laughs> Can I go deeper? Tell it deeper. Well, hello there. Hello. 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 Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. You guys are cracking me up. You guys are cracking me up. But, you know, in all fairness, we don't, I, I'm making fun, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a valuable lesson. Like, we really don't know who's on the other end of that phone, you know, and you, because it, you guys know my voice, so it's not really fair. But if, if I called in to a show, you know, I don't know if you didn't see me, if you would know it was me. You know, especially after talking, because sometimes I do like, I don't know, a lot of talking and sometimes my voice does get a little raspy. So, next, uh, you know, every now and again, I do have man voice, you know, I'll call in during man voice time. There you go. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, that's Betty. <laughs> that's too funny. That's too funny. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, my my mom, guys, Mama Bullhorn called into the show today. Uh, I'm not lying. And and she she thinks it's Katie. I how do you argue with mom about a mom? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> so my mom's like on like you need to stop, uh, you probably need to look at, uh, you know, Katie, you're, you're probably focusing just a little too much on Chris over there, honey, you know, I, maybe, you know, maybe out the, it was the scratches, but you know what, <sighs> he might have helped, I mean, let me ask the ladies in here. It's a Friday night. You guys are probably, I mean, it's 8 o'clock at night. I'm sure some of you guys got a few glasses of wine in you, right? <laughs> so let me ask you, if, if, if something really bad happened and, 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 you know, shit went south, who are you calling? I'm calling my BFF because she... <laughs> <laughs> She's a ride or die, okay? <laughs> I wouldn't want my mom involved, but my best friend, she's, she, did you guys, did you guys hear me one night when I was talking about uh, Quentin Simon's case and I was, you know, Billy Joe, which I do not like. I think she's a piece of garbage grandmother because she had custody of her grandson, right? And, uh, but she has a friend, you know, and her friend came out of the driveway and acting like she was going to hit, you know, she was going to hit us. She wasn't going to it, but she just, you know, gunned it, you know, like she was. And, you know, even though I, it, when I was starting to present this case, when I was starting to take its turn and I'm like, you know, Chris and Katie really don't have those friends in their life. They don't, that should be telling in and of itself. They don't have somebody getting in their truck, trying to hit somebody. I mean, again, not hitting, but you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, where, where's their ride or dies? Like my, my best friend, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I think she'd be one of the, I think she'd be the one <laughs> in the monster truck. Going, hey, hon, you need a ride? <laughs> you know? Hold on, let me back up a little bit. Let me pick you back up. Boom, boom. <laughs> I am joking. My best, my best friend would not be involved in anything like that. But you know, she she got my back. Is all I'm saying. She got my back. So let's get back to this. Let's read the rest of this now that I've, you know, and I'm not making light of this. I I, I do like this lady. I like the way she's she's um she's going with this. It's just that when it starts getting into the mafia type stuff, I think. Um, that's kind of, I mean, but it could, I mean, we don't know these people, to be honest with you. We don't know any of these people. We don't know them from Adam. I could tell you he's got a rich uncle. I could tell you that. So they do have access to money without a doubt. 
without a doubt. And I would think that his uncle would tell him to keep his mouth shut and get an attorney. And quite frankly, he may have taken the advice. I heard that Chris was on that, that, that crazy chick's channel and he goes and she's a garbage channel anyways, but I can't remember. But people were telling me that she was, he was there every night or something like that. I hope he's not on those garbage channels. Just, just chilling out and hanging out. That's like, that's like the worst thing that they could be doing right now with all this heat. I mean, honesty. Yeah, that's it, Taj. But with all this heat, that's like, I mean, how, how, they seem like they're smart enough to stay out this long. But you know what? That comment about the grandma, I don't know. I don't know. But I do want to read you guys something. You know what? Before I finish this, I do want to read you something because... Concern K uh, reached out to me and was asking me some questions. And, you know, of course, I try to be as, you know, if they're asking me my opinion, I try to be as honest about my opinion as possible. And it was about some stuff <clears throat> that was uh, said, you know, obviously here on TikTok, it kind of turned TikTok on its, you know, head a little bit about what was heard. And I don't think, this is kind of why I don't think it it wasn't true, and I'm talking about, I don't know who, who um, Stephen is. I don't know if, if, you know, he, I don't know anything about him. So I, I'm saying, saying this from a completely separated person that, you know, doesn't know any of, know any of them, okay? <clears throat> but I do think we had all the information at the beginning. I just think it was packaged differently. I think it was kind of packaged in pieces instead of packaged the way he presented it. And here's why. So when I was responding back, I kind of was trying to explain, you know, kind of what my my initial impressions were. So I'm just going to share that with you. And I hope it's not, uh, and it's, I hope, I hope it's not offensive. I don't think anything in here should, should be deemed offensive. I mean, if we don't agree, uh, you know, that's, that's perfectly fine, but I don't think any, I don't think I'm, I'm ever really offensive, but uh, this is what I, I wrote. I said, I don't think it was like that. I heard that he said, I heard what he said, and he really didn't get anything from law enforcement. They basically fed him word salad. If you really listen to, if you really listen, it's not what we have heard before. It's not, it's not that we haven't heard before, not something we haven't heard before. I think I misspelled here. Ellie told us they had footage, right? They did tell us they had footage. The only new information was within the last three days, something came to light that took, or, or it was only new information that within the first three days that something came to light that took the investigation um, into a 180 degree direction. And it was implied that it was based upon footage. I don't know if it's a slip. It seems like it's confirmed information dressed up differently. For example, L.E. told us that Sebastian Rogers was last seen on the 25th around 9. That was changed to 10 when Katie talked about the thud. Law enforcement changed the date, uh, and this was, uh, uh, oh, changed the date to the 26th and upgraded the case to the 27th at noon, and that was on the Amber Alert. If you guys remember at noon on the 27th when the, when the Amber Alert was issued and the Amber Alert said the 26th, not the 25th. Uh, their, head, their head search coordinator was interviewed by media and said they had never picked up a track, uh, the tracks and that, that they have, in his experience, has never had, like that never has happened before. And that came right from one of their head search coordinators. Um, they released that they collected video and CCTV footage before the direction of their case changed. We talked about it on our show as well as, a, as it appears they have footage. I think they told us uh, this all along. It was just packaged differently. This is how I was ex able to explain it to myself. But honestly, I don't know if the guy's telling the truth because I don't know him, right? So, of course, only time will tell, but on its face, it sounded credible to me. All I know is I've had the experience like this, 
and nobody wanted to believe me, but with me, I recorded it. I recorded all of the events that I've had with law enforcement, with Moab, uh, uh, Chief uh, Lieutenant Chief, um, with Lieutenant Kim Neal, and um, with the, um, the two different recordings from the detectives in the Summer Wells case that, I, that, that me and the team spent four hours with, two hours on one day and two hours on another. So had those not been recorded, nobody would have believed me that we would have been talking to law enforcement in, you know, private rooms and stuff like that. So <clears throat> that's, you know, that's why I, there, there is, there is a possibility here that people aren't talking about, you know, I, I've got recordings. I can prove to you that law enforcement does sit down and speak to people. I didn't have an appointment on any of those three. So I, I can't tell you whether he's telling the truth or not. All I can tell you is I've had experiences like that. And quite frankly, so is JLR because he was all three of them. So when he said he didn't believe that this could be credible, I was shocked because he clearly knows that's not true. He clearly knows that's not true. So I just, this is kind of how I was able to, like I said, explain it to myself. And, and the reason why I have to explain it to myself is because I don't want to call anybody a liar because in, in the grand scheme of things, we truly don't know. And how horrible would it be for you just to randomly call somebody a liar when they're not lying, you know? So that's just really kind of my experience. And I just thought I would throw that out there, not to throw shade on anybody or anything like that. I... I really don't know one way or another. All I can tell you is I've personally had multiple experiences uh, where I was looking into uh, a case and was able to get somebody to speak to me from law enforcement about the case, multiple occasions. So, you know, I, again, it is what it is. You know, I, I don't know. Time will tell. Time will tell. Okay, yeah, I will. I will. I don't know what it says, but I can't obviously check it right right at the moment. Can somebody send it to me, like maybe in, in TikTok Messenger or something, and I'll go, because I every time I go to search for these people, I never find them. I couldn't find Beach. I couldn't find Beach. I was going to try to go over there and see what was going on there, and I couldn't find her, so I'm obviously not doing something right. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, anyways... Uh, have you heard about underground bunkers? Oh, oh, you know what? I don't even want to hear it. I remember in, in Gabby Petito, they started talking about underground bunkers. If we start talking about underground bunkers, guys, we're going to be going down a rabbit hole that is going to be just spinning heads. Or, seriously. I have never heard of a bunker theory panning out so far. Just, I mean, there's a first time for everything. There's a first time for everything. But honestly, I, I, I haven't heard of a case. Well, I guess, you know, maybe basements. I've heard of a basement. I'm sure there's got to be some creepy bunker story out there. I've got to think that. I got to think that there, there is a creepy bunker story out there. I guess it's, you know, I guess anything is, is possible, you know. I mean, again, truth is stranger than fiction, but... I try to live in, in, in probabilities more than possibilities. And it just, I look at things that, that have the, the highest uh, probability of holding the most weight. And I just don't see a, a bunker. Th in, in, in even, like, look at, look at um, uh, Charlotte Senna's case. Like, even in hers, with hers is a true, uh, you know, a true snatching. And she wasn't in a bunker. She was in a, uh, a cupboard right smushed into a little cupboard hiding forced to hide um as the law enforcement was breaching the the trailer i, I can't imagine what that must have been like but so far i mean i know there i know there's got to be I, this world's so freaking there's got to be bunker stories you i <laughs> i feel like you said like some of you guys are already on google checking <laughs> People are probably laughing at me because I know there's somebody out of you 384 people 
that have gone to Google to look for bunker stories. I know there's some of you in there. I know it. I know it. You're going to be like, I wonder if there is any bunker. <laughs> you know who you are. You know who you are. Bunker stories. That is funny. That is funny. All right, so let's finish. Let's. We got a few more uh, of the items left in here. Let's just f see how this all how this all worked out. So I think we were right at nineteen. Okay, the incident was the last straw. Now we we're up a little higher. The Stockholm syndrome. Okay, so we're at eighteen. <clears throat> it says, "I think this. I think this incident. Oh, thank you." <laughs> I think this incident was the last straw, and I think that CP went to his mother and his sister, and they decided that they should take Sebastian and hold him as an insurance till the custody case was over. I believe it was a setup, and Katie got one last weekend with her son the weekend before the court case. They went shopping, got items for that Sebastian need. <clears throat> These probably went to Bower Sox business cards, getting uh, Bower Sox business card or business records, excuse me would take a lot more evidence to get a warrant. He got a new pair of shoes. That's why he they, it was so important for Katie to say he left barefoot. He got snacks. Sidebar here, she says, I have always told my children who are adults to listen to a person's heart. For example, my doctor daughter is moving across country to take a position with a hospital. My attorney daughter told her she was going to hate it there because of the long cold winters and she was going to miss our traditional family holidays it hurt dr daughter's feelings i remember her i re reminded her to hear her sister's heart not her words uh, her sister was saying i don't want you to leave sis i hope you hate it there i can't imagine the holidays without you here katie's heart i took him shopping I bought his favorite snacks because he, he was a teen and I didn't want him to be without his favorite snacks. I took care of him. Kind of, that kind of just gave me goosebumps a little bit. I, I got to tell you, that gave me goosebumps a little bit. If we could go back and see Katie leaving for military, she probably did the same thing, telling herself, I'm paying, I'm paying to make sure that his dad can stay home with him to take care of him. I'm providing for him and being the best mom I can be. That's how she dealt with being away from her baby. Her background, I think, KP was terrified. She was an abuse. She would uh, terrify. She would an abuser just like her family, and she left out of fear for being like her own family. I think it was planned that Sunday night. Chris would be on the phone with KP. The phones were connected, and CP left Memphis. In an unknown vehicle, his phone was left in the RV. Sunset was at 5.36 on Sunday, February 25th. Sunrise on the 26th at 6.20. They had 12 hours under the cover of darkness to pull off a scheme. I venture to say less right about, yeah, about because he was at work at 5.15. So we have to take an hour, so maybe, but 5.15, 536 was when sunset I would say about 11 to 12 hours 10 to 12 hours conservatively um, under the the cover of night I believe the shadow shadowy video that looks like people fighting was just that I don't think it was Sebastian fighting I think it was CP and Katie fighting I think the oh I think the marks bites and scratches on the arm are from Katie not Sebastian in her theory. Holy smokes. I didn't even think about that. Her and her and Chris getting into it. <clears throat> she was wearing a long sleeve shirt <clears throat> in that interview. We got photos. Let's look. I think she was wearing a long sleeve shirt. He was the one with the short sleeve shirt. Oh, it doesn't show. No, her arms. Her arms are. No, she's got arms showing. She's got arms showing. I don't see any scratches on her arms. I'm going to have to blow that up. I'm going to have to go back there and check that out. We did find her biting her tongue. We might not be looking close enough at this video. This was the first video. This green shirt video right here 
was the very first interview they gave um, they gave media eight days after their son was missing. Eight days. I think we need to blow that up. I think we need to analyze the heck out of that because that's where they found all the marks on his arm. Maybe there's something else. And there was something black she was holding in her hand. I think the black thing up here is the microphone, you know, for the reporter. But she has something, it looks like something hard and black in her hand. Like that she holds, it, 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 it's weird. There's one spot, let me see if I got the, I don't think I have him on any of these photos here. I don't even think I see her hand. But in one of these, this it's this hand, it's this hand, nah, this hand right here that's holding something black in it. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So, let me get it back to Sebastian. There we go. So I didn't even think about them fighting. So that's interesting. I think that Sebastian was put into Katie's car at around 6 a.m. and she went to meet the Bower Sox at Warsham's, where once again there was a struggle that took place. When KP allegedly went out that morning to look outside for Sebastian, why didn't she turn on the porch light and floodlights? Interesting. It was still a pitch black, it was still pitch black outside. Sunrise come slowly to the mountains and it doesn't get light for a while after sunrise. Sunrise was at 6.26 a.m. According to CP and KP, KP went to wake Sebastian up. She choked over her words. If you noticed in the interview, she said, I went in and woke him up and he wasn't there. She didn't say, I went in to wake him up and she, or I went in to wake him up. She didn't go in and wake him up, but not to go to school. I, I, I guess I'm a little confused. Maybe when I re read that, hopefully that made sense to you. It didn't really make sense to me. I think it did. I think she, she's talking about the words because she's saying, she choked over her words. She said, I went in and woke Sebastian up and he wasn't there. She didn't say, I went in to wake him up. Okay. In two. I don't know. That might be a little too too much. That might be a, too pl too much of a play on words. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Might be something. Might be something. When asked about the door that Sebastian went out and how, how did they know for sure he didn't go out one of the other doors, CP stated he wouldn't go out one door because he went out that door, then everybody would have heard. He chokes when he realizes that he tries to skip that part of the sentence. Who is everybody if KP was home alone? Oh, and that's why she said at the beginning when she was bringing up the affair that that might be important. But we have caught Chris saying multiple times, we, when he really was implying me or I. Because in that um, statement where he went back to the camper, because we, we played that last night where he went back to the camper and he stated he was gone about 17 hours. And we're like, 17 hours? It's only three and a half hours away. Why did he need 17 hours? But we found that. And um, I don't know. I just, I, just, I think that um, we should focus on that. I really do. I really do. I think we should focus on that. But he chokes. He says he ch she she says he chokes when he talks about going out the door. I wonder if she did. I heard he was having an affair. When I had people on the ground asking whether she had an affair or not, none of the neighbors saw this alleged affair of hers that I could find personally. So, and I couldn't find anybody to corroborate CP was having one, but I really heard through the grapevine he was, I just couldn't find any corroboration, but they said there was evidence of it. Like I, I would, I think law enforcement, if they, if they're going through his, his past, then they'll, they may have uncovered it. Cause like I said, I don't know who I heard this from or where I heard for this from, or, you know, it's, it's obviously allegedly because I've got no way of corroborating it. 
And it was a rumor. Like I did, I don't know where I heard it from. I heard it from somebody, but couldn't tell you who it was. Uh, she did with the neighbor because he said it, KP and Seb visited him. Visited who? Did, did, having an affair on his wife, not Katie. I don't know. I guess I'm coming in the middle of conversations. I don't know. I don't know. Where are where am I? We got just a few more left, and then I'm I will we'll we'll chat about it. Um, he ch okay. This was about the door. Oh, and and then he also said we also heard from a neighbor that, and I think I've said this on here a few times, where he he got the mail and skipped up to the door, but then uh, the door wasn't unlocked for him, so he went down and, and went into the garage. <clears throat> the one question I have is I'm not sure if that, that happened on Sunday unless they forgot to grab the mail on Saturday. Because we all know the mail does not run to the mailbox on Sunday. There is some mail that USPS mail that does is delivered to you on Sunday, but it's usually in a package form or a higher priced postage form. Uh, KP points out the colossal popcorn. KP and CP point out KP went into the kitchen to look for Sebastian because he might be in there getting food. That was interesting. KP and CP talked about how she took him out to eat. Uh, they went to the grocery store to buy snacks. Food is a big issue in that family. But they had, but they had a camera that they could use to monitor Sebastian getting food from the kitchen. Interesting. Did they have an interior, like uh, maybe a ring camera or a, a blink camera that was just nobody knew about, that was just hooked up and had its own little sinking box? Interesting. And the timeline for KP and CP called police within minutes of uh, finding Sebastian missing and Ellie arriving in minutes according. However, dispatch uh, call clearly came in at 634. My theory has stayed the same since the beginning. I believe, oh, thank you, Christina. I believe um, that they never expected this to even be noticed by media. I think they thought Kate, Kathy Bauer, Sox, and daughter could control the narrative. And within a couple weeks, Sebastian, oh, what is this? Oh, hold on. Oops. Let me move this. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. And within weeks, what was it? Um, where was I here? My theory say the same since uh, I never expected this to even be noticed by media. I think they thought Kathy Bauer, Sox, and Daughter could control the narrative. Sebastian would come home, uh, but to Seth. They thought that they would have faith and the, and the world would be all right as rain. I don't know what that means. They did not account for the true crime community for this case to go going viral. And I do believe that. I kind of I kind of believe that. There's more here, but um, I'll have to read that another time because to be honest with you, I'm kind of tired and there's still um, a whole summarization of everything we just read here. So anyways, the na neighbor said, <clears throat> let me just go up here just a little bit here. A neighbor said KP and Sebastian was at his house on 520. Yes, that is true. A lot of people still believe that um, Sebastian may not have come home, uh, but I think it's well known right now that uh, there, is, uh, there is a video of Sebastian taking out the garbage Sunday night. And it appears that it may have been after the um, after the Texas Roadhouse, and the reason why we know that is because in the in the initial part of the investigation, before when it was just a missing person, what the first few days of this case, some of the neighbors had talked to people about what law enforcement told them and what law enforcement was collecting, because again. Nobody was thinking this child that this child wasn't going to be found. So it really wasn't tight lipped like it was right now. You know, everybody's just doing their part and filling everybody else in on information. So the neighbors are saying, yeah, they collected this. 
Uh, my husband asked them, did they did they see Sebastian taking out the garbage and went through like this dissertation about how the garbage needs to come out to the road Sunday because the garbage truck comes so early in the morning. If you don't have it the night before, you'll miss the garbage truck. So there was a reason why they would have seen uh, someone on that camera. And she said that the cops had confirmed with her, but this wasn't the only neighbor. There were a couple neighbors that said cops had confirmed with them that they absolutely saw him that, that night um, taking out the trash. So even though it didn't come from law enforcement, it came from multiple neighbors in that community. And to me, that's corroborated. You know, that's corroborated. Um, so I don't know. Thank you, buddy, for not just jumping on hate train for Seth and his decision. I don't understand. Um, yeah, well, this is this is how I look at it, is I always try to put myself in any situation. How would I personally react if, if that was happening to me? And at the end of the day, nobody's going to tell me what the F to do, period. Nobody. I will do as I damn well please. And let somebody try to dictate to me or tell me how to go out and find, say, my missing mother or my missing grandchild and how enraged that would make me. I could not express that into words. But nobody's going to tell me what I can do, who to hire, what, who to fire, who to... Like, I put, try to put myself in everybody's situation. You know, there are some people that, that wouldn't, right? And that's for that's their personality and stuff like that, but... I, I'm not theorizing for other people's, it's, it's my, you know, my opinion because it's me. And I keep trying to put, you know, everybody's got to put themselves in somebody else's shoes before you should be responding in my opinion. And I, no, I'm not getting on a bandwagon of hate. I don't stand on hate. Um, you know, I've never stood on hate. Have I done some crazy stuff? Of course, I've done a lot of crazy stuff, you know. Quite frankly, I do a lot of crazy stuff for these cases. If they need attention or, you know, avocation or somebody needs to go to jail and they're not going to jail, you know, I kind of jump into the, the mix a little bit, right? But um, hate, it doesn't come from a place of hate. It comes from a place of love. Uh, even Leilani Simon, that was love for her son that she didn't love, you know? Um, so it's just, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't like... I hate and I feel like if I really truly believed it it would be a different story if I believe the allegations but you can clearly see it's jealousy and butt hurt everybody and but you know what at the end of the day when you look at their behavior especially all of this you kind of understand Seth's decision I'm sorry uh, there's there's like hello <laughs> I don't know what to say hello uh, I'm just and, and to keep doubling down and tripling down, it's just like, good grief. Like, we have better things to do here. We've got theories to talk about. And, you know, and the reason why I talk about theories and speculation is what is it? what if it uncovers that one little um, angle that we weren't thinking about that we can explore that might find that nugget of information, you know? And that's really what it's about. A lot of people come here, oh, they're just, you know, they're just... Uh, theorizing or speculating yeah because speculating gets the the gears turning they get us thinking in different directions they get us thinking outside the box and then if we find something that's like hmm interesting we can explore it and see if it holds water um i i don't know any investigator that hasn't speculated or theorized i i i haven't found one yet right because you have to theorize and speculate to go find the evidence, right? It just doesn't fall in your lap. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they get a cigarette, but what does this mean? I don't know. You gotta wait for DNA. You no, know, it means, means somebody was there. <laughs> That's what it means. So, all right, guys, I love you. Thank you guys for being here. I just want, I'm glad we got to end Friday night on a much better, much, much better note. I didn't want to, but I was just, earlier today, I was just at, at my limit with the whole bashing of Seth. I, I can't imagine what that man's going through. 
Um, it doesn't matter what mistakes he's ever made, you know, no matter what mistakes he's ever made in his life, he doesn't deserve this. He just doesn't. He's a father of a missing boy. And to have somebody that spent 10 years in prison talking about his past and, and, and acting like uh, people's past, they can't be redeemed, but somehow this person is the only person that's allowed to have a past that's redeemable. I just find it really disheartening, me personally, especially me having my own past um, and working very, very hard um, just to change. It's, it's not an easy path, I can tell you that, but uh, change is possible. And um, I, I, I do not dog people for their past because it's not about their past. If everybody, think about it. Why would, the only reason why people pick on people for their past is because it's something they can't change. But they never pick on them for their future. They never pick on them for the future. Why? Because, you know, that that's the person's destiny. So I, I just, I think that underdogs and uh, people that you wouldn't think probably sometimes can do, you know, pretty darn good jobs. I'm just saying, you know, I like to give everybody an opportunity, you know, because people gave me an opportunity. Always remember that. If you can't give somebody something, then don't expect it to be for you to have it. And I think we've all in our lives had opportunities that maybe we didn't deserve, you know, just saying. All right, guys, God bless. Take it for what you will. We'll see you soon. Rock it out with your coffee beans out. Might be a little too late, but wine glasses? I don't know. I don't do wine. <laughs> I don't do bitching either. All right, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Bye.